Good evening, Stonebridge fans, and welcome here to Season 3, Episode 4 of Sports Talk with Rags. And tonight we are talking volleyball here with uh, the head coach of volleyball here at Stonebridge Christian School, Eric Plumley. Eric, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, Rags. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, appreciate your time. And uh, hey, let's uh, let's talk about here your, your involvement here with... Uh, leading the uh, volleyball program at school there first? Well, I mean, you know, the Stonebridge Volleyball Program is a pretty special group of girls, but pretty special program. Um, a lot of credit goes to my predecessor. Um, a, he did a phenomenal job years ago, uh, showed up at the uh, right place at the right time and volunteered to uh, take the JV team. And um, that was back you know, some time ago, I don't know, we really started tracking records and the success of the program back in 2007. And mm -hmm. so it's pretty cool to see the uh, progression of the program and the improvement really hit something special uh, in late 2012. And it has taken off ever since. So I've just been happy to be around for the past 10 years or so. And um, I enjoy every season, every match of every season. Uh, and it's a wonderful thing. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, here it is. You have uh, what approximately a uh, hundred and twenty girls there in uh, there in high school, and I see that you guys have had uh, five five thirty plus uh, uh, five seasons of thirty plus wins there that I got through uh, max preps, and you guys have won uh, four state titles there since. Uh, here in the last 12 years that you've been leading the program? Yeah, so the uh, the record is pretty cool. If you go back in, in 2007 to 2011, you can really see the formative years and just getting our stride and figuring out who we were. Uh, one in 13 in conference in 2007 and started building on it from there. Uh, 2012, we had a good season. We were 15 and four in conference, but Really what launched us at that point was we had a run in the conference tournament and knocked off a very talented Hampton Christian team. And it was really an upset of upsets. Mm -hmm. And it was the first year that we had won the conference tournament and we have not looked back thus far. So we've got 11 conference tournaments under our belt. We got 10 regular season titles in a row. Uh, we are riding a 141 uh, conference game winning streak since 2012, 2013, we're 146 and one in conference. Uh, and our overall record, and this is conference and uh, the big private schools, the big public schools, 286 and 36 uh, since 2013. Yeah. So uh, Little Stonebridge with their, uh, their small enrollment, uh, has made a big impact uh, across the area and and really the state. Uh, not only our state, we've uh, we've played teams from North Carolina and West Virginia. So we've we've had a uh, quite the storied run. Yes, and uh, so the uh, the conference that you guys are in is uh, Metro, and then for uh, for volleyball, uh, when it goes to the state, is that. D2 or D3 that you guys are in there? I know that it varies from uh, sport to sport. Yeah, it varies sport to sport, and it varies uh, even between the genders. So you can have, uh, you know, boys soccer, for instance, be in one division and girls soccer be in another. So up until last season, there were three divisions in VISA, which, of course, the Virginia Independent Schools Athletic Association and uh, the three divisions in volleyball, we occupied uh, the lowest division. Again, it's based on uh, girls enrollment 12, uh, 9 through 12. This year, they, uh, they had so many private schools within VISA that they made a fourth division, and our enrollment kept us in the third. So we've always been D3. Uh, it's just that for most years, we were D3 out of three. Now we're D3 out of four. So, uh, But yeah, D3 program in VISA. Yes. And with, uh, you know, this year going 34 and four, you know, other other years, you guys, you know, went 35 and four. So I'm sure 
with uh, going non-conference, you guys are able to play some public schools, right? Well, we did that, you know, back in that 2011 uh, time frame, 2010, 2011, there was really a concerted effort that if we're going to get better, we need to start looking for different competition, expanding the schedule, and certainly looking for things that were more uh, challenging to the program. The pollsters had no idea who we were out in the central right. western part of the state. And so part of the drive was to get the, the program noticed by scheduling matches out in the Lynchburg area. Uh, it it kind of became a neat thing referred to as the Lynchburg trip internally, where we get the kids out of school and go up uh, to play one of the Lynchburg area schools on a Friday. And then we'd have a great steak dinner and then uh, play again on Saturday. Uh, and that really helped get us some recognition. But beyond that, we started playing tournaments and some of the tournaments were hosted by private schools like Peninsula Catholic. Other mm -hmm. schools were uh, hosting tournaments. Granby High School hosted one. But the one that really got us, um, I guess, playing with the larger schools and seeing that level of competition was the endless summer tournament uh, that comes about uh, every fall. And we have played some really big schools in those tournaments. I mean, if you if you name it, of course, from uh, Western Branch and Grassfield and Deep Creek, we played Cox, Landstown, Currituck. We played Musselman out of West Virginia, mm -hmm. um, Kempsville, Salem, Bayside. Uh, and we played all the big private uh, schools, Norfolk Academy, of course, the one here locally that everybody would recognize. Uh, and so, yeah, we have we have certainly uh, not shied away from the larger schools, the bigger competition. And quite frankly, um, the stature of those girls in the in the larger schools, they, they just tend to be um, taller, much, much bigger um, individuals than than Stonebridge has. We've always been you know, undersized with smaller girls. So it makes it all that much more challenging for the program. Yes. And uh, let's see. So you have six on a court uh, during the match. And then how many do you have? Do you have on a on a team that you about average uh, take from uh, season to season? Yeah, so it, it varies, you know, because with uh, with the small private Christian school, you know, it doesn't we don't necessarily do tryouts like you would see at a traditional school or a, a much larger school. Um, so we kind of ebb and flow with the level of interest. But overall, I would say that we probably average uh, 10 girls, 11 girls this past season. We had 14 on the roster, which was unusual for us. But two of those girls were ineligible because of season ending ACL injuries early on. Um, mm. And so we really had 12 active players. And that is a, uh, an, an average size, I would say, uh, for uh, private schools, especially some of the large public schools, especially uh, in the cities that don't have JV programs, their rosters will be they, they have more on their roster than we have in our you know high school. I mean, they're they're enormous. Um, but no, we, we carry, you know, 10 to 12 girls year to year on the varsity program. And with the uh, success of the Stonebridge volleyball program, there's also uh, a JV and is there a middle school program as well? Yeah, we call it a JJV, but that's exactly right. It's a middle school program uh, populated mostly by sixth to eighth grade girls. If we have numbers issues, then we will invite fifth graders to, to try out and play as well. So we do have uh, all three levels of the program and really it breeds the success of the upper divisions. It's something that we uh, that we focus on. Um, you know, the Stonebridge program is is really unique. It's, it's built on um, what we call the, the four C's, character, confidence, cohesion and competition. And the, the, the verse that really is the foundation for the program is Philippians uh, chapter one, verses 27 and 28. And so uh, if you know anything about Stonebridge, you know that it's a, it's a notebook method. It is not a textbook driven school. And the volleyball program is based um, very similarly to what their curriculum is as far as a, sort of a mentoring demonstration, um, the, the teacher or the coach becomes the living textbook. And one of the reasons that we've had so much success, in my opinion, is because we have trained fifth and sixth graders as we do varsity players. 
Um, we get accused a lot of recruiting and that kind of stuff. Nothing could be further from the truth. You can go right. back and look at our four state championships and right. see these kids all the way back. And people say, hey, where do you recruit? <laughs> um, uh, you know, from where do you recruit? And my answer is always uh, from Miss Beal's K-4 class. Uh, are you there? Yep. Yep. Right here. I lost so, you for a second. So, no. Yes. So, so it's a homegrown program through and through. And it's the the instruction that we provide. Of course, it's all based on, you know, skill and physical ability. But we we um, we introduce the skills and the strategies and the techniques and the training at a very early age. And these kids just learn. Uh, the program, they learn what's expected of them and they develop within the program. And so by the time um, even that we, we have tremendous success at all three levels, but we are um, we don't play uh, and build rosters so that we can worry about JJV championships. Um, we don't even necessarily build rosters so we can worry about JV championships. Uh, we've had plenty of both, but uh, our goal is to strengthen the varsity program as much as possible to train each individual girl to achieve and enjoy the synergy that comes from uh, these individuals that take the court together and can play in unison uh, with with a common goal. Uh, and it's been it's been effective. Yes, and I see that uh, you know with uh, the program winning a state title. I mean, from sixteen to nineteen, you guys were on a nice run of winning three out of four years and then with the pandemic you know but uh you know here after the pandemic you know you guys uh finished here the recent uh season on uh on top yeah we had a great run in 22 uh 21 we came up like you said 2020 was plagued with the plague uh, and so we ended up playing. We didn't think we were going to be able to play at all. We were we were very fortunate that in 20, we at least got a conference schedule in and we picked up uh, the Beach Breakers as a match as well. So we ended up with an undefeated season. It was abbreviated, but we ended up 15-0 and on the season. But it, there was nothing to show for it other than another conference um, um, regular season, of course, a tournament championship, which, of course, we're very, very grateful for. We were very excited. The girls were very excited. But Obviously, that season left us short without an opportunity to compete in the state championship. 2021, we we came up short in the um, in the state championship. Uh, it was nice. We got to uh, see that team last year uh, in the state championship. They returned a lot of girls. Um, we uh, kind of retooled and returned a number as well, uh, and we got the better of them in the state championship to uh, to polish off really another fantastic season. So yeah, 2022. Uh, was a was a great great season, as were yeah. 16, 17, and nineteen. Right, right, yes. And uh, so, what do the girls? Let's see. I guess after volleyball, then go right into basketball. And um, you know what's uh, what's there for the once school volleyball is over. Well, you know. When you and I were growing up, Rags, I don't know how old you are. I mean, you look like you're in your uh, mid-20s. So I'm assuming that, uh, you know, you're a youngster. But when I was growing up, sports were very seasonal. And, you know, you you went from football to basketball to baseball. You took off your summers for the most part, played a little baseball, and then, you know, got going early on football. Um, and um, there was none of this year-round stuff. And somewhere along the way, uh, people started feeding us and our children the lie that you had to be year round committed to a sport or else it would pass you by. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they also dangled the scholarship carrot and the and the you know bragging rights that comes with playing at the collegiate level, especially if you play D1, the almighty D1. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're they're you know, and some people, you know, chase that dream or whatever you want to call it. Other people just just love it so much that they just whenever they get an opportunity to play, they play. And it has nothing to do with chasing money or prestige. They just love the sport. So we have a mixed bag out of the school program. We have kids that do transition uh, from school volleyball and they go straight into school basketball. We have um, uh, other kids that um, go into we have a lot of kids that, that play uh, club volleyball, which in the baseball equivalents travel. Right. Uh, the volleyballers call it club. Uh, and so they transition into that. And there's a lot of overlap in the season. A school season will start 
August the 1st, and depending on the success of your program, and if you're public or private school, you can play into the second or third week of November. And then the club will start December the 1st, and depending on what club you play with and how aggressive a, of a schedule they want to maintain, you'll play either into early May or you could play even into early July if you have mm -hmm. a club that wants to keep progressing and, and playing up into either the AAU Nationals or the USAV Nationals. Uh, those are always you know, sort of the culminating event towards the end of the summer. But then you turn right around and you try out for next year's club season in July you put that on pause and then you're back into school volleyball in August. And sort of the, the, the third level of these things is the girls that play on the sand. You know, there's a lot of beach complement that goes with it as well, which really, really helps develop players in a, in a lot of different ways. Um, so, yeah, we, we have a mixed bag in the program of year round volleyballers uh, and that's what they do. Uh, and then those kids that do, basketball and school soccer you know we got kids that you know do the fine arts and you know we got kids i got a kid on my club team that um she also does lacrosse and she does horseback riding and so we got a little bit of everything uh within uh the program so you've led the school team for 12 years and you've led the club uh, team here for here for six and it looks like that uh recently here with uh, 16U and, and 18U of, uh, of your club. Uh, looks like that they had a great weekend of, uh, what, uh, peak volleyball? Is that, is that the club? Yeah, it is. So um, Steve Elliott was really the, the, the pioneer of modern-day Sternbridge volleyball. Again, back um, – I don't have it in front of me. I think it was in the seven time frame. He's got – He's got five children, uh, four daughters and a son, and, and he was taking his oldest daughter up to a tryout and realized there was no coach. And so he stayed behind and um, answered the call, if you will. And he's he has been the Pied Piper of the program. Um, I was fortunate enough to come into the program somewhere along 2010. Um, I was um, coaching at the lower level as a head coach and I was um, you know hanging out with the, the, the varsity team. Uh, in some capacity or another, he didn't actually uh, turn over the, the head coach reins until after the 2020 season. Um, and so I have been part of the coaching staff uh, at Stonebridge for that long. Um, but as far as the, the varsity head coach, technically not until the last couple of years. So the, the club aspect was something that um, uh, we had talked about wanting to do. You know, there's, there's a lot of big clubs around here. And then there's a number of mid-sized clubs. My oldest two daughters, uh, as you know, I, I kind of uh, have two sets of children. I mean, they're, we're, they're all from my wife and me, but um, it was, uh, we had our first two uh, bang, bang. It was 15 months apart. And then we took a seven year break from having children. And then we had our third and then two years later had our fourth, uh, all girls. And so the little ones grew up in the gym watching the older two sisters play and they were going to follow in their footsteps. The problem is the footsteps that their older sisters uh, had blazed were out of a club in Williamsburg. Uh -huh. And it was a national uh, quality club, the teams that they were on. And so uh, it was three times a week up in Williamsburg. And it was lots of travel, extensive travel, up to 15 tournaments in the, in the season. And um, it was extensive travel. I and mean, we would go, you know, from Louisville to Orlando, we would do uh, a lot of Carolina and uh, down to Atlanta. We flew to Chicago. We did all kinds of stuff. And so when the, the younger two came along and they began their um, desire to play club volleyball, uh, I just knew that I wasn't going to drive to Williamsburg and uh, felt like we had the tools to give them what they needed uh, to enjoy volleyball, to take the hopefully the the negativity out of the youth athletics and to infuse it with what Stonebridge school is to volleyball. We wanted that to be similar, uh, if not the same with the club experience as well, but just open it up a little bit different. So six years ago, we handpicked a group of um, basically 10 and 11 year olds and we went out and we, we literally um, just sort of beta tested it. And uh, I took this little group of girls and we went around and, uh, played these little local tournaments and people started noticing. So we plunked a yard sign out the following summer 
and uh, 78 kids rolled into the gym <laughs> to try out. <laughs> yeah, so it was kind of like, oops. Um, you know, we didn't have the gym space. We didn't have the coaching. We didn't, you know, anything. It was overwhelming because we went from, you know, literally – eight girls to uh, almost 80 and uh, five teams. So we fielded 12s, 13s, 14, 15, 16s. Um, and so um, it built in the following year. We had six teams. Uh, and so the club, we initially called it Stonebridge Volleyball Club. And um, just to avoid the confusion and to, to establish more autonomy, uh, we changed the name last year to Peak Volleyball Academy, uh, more affectionately known as PVA. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we've had a lot of success, uh, played last weekend or, you know, just yesterday, um, had some success, uh, came up just short in the championship a couple weekends before that. We won a really big tournament, um, uh, out of Richmond, uh, we took first place in that with the 16s team. Um, this group of girls been, has been playing together for a while and they had tremendous success last year as a 15s team, great success as a 14s team. COVID cut them short, but they were on en route to having a great 13 season, had a great 12 season the year before that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a special group uh, top to bottom from the little 12 year olds that are literally just starting out. You know, half of them can't hardly hit the ball to the net, much less over it, all the way up to some some talented 18 year olds who uh, have already gotten college commits. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the volleyball uh, club is a special group. And it's an eclectic group. It's not just Stonebridge community, um, but it are it, it, they are like-minded uh, families that have come together, understanding uh, the culture of the club, um, and they have bought into it. And they are fantastic. Uh, they're great promoters of it. They are great stewards of the mission of the club, and um, we've enjoyed tremendous success on and off the court. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I do, uh, Elizabeth and I, we do know you're uh, older too, and I I thought that, that they played in a club there in Williamsburg, so when I saw, when I saw the peak, the peak volleyball uh, academy, I thought that that was uh, a different, um, a different club than what your older two played on. Yeah, it definitely was. Williamsburg Volleyball uh, club was, uh, it's interesting, my oldest daughter and, and you'll, uh, you know her. And so, you know, that, you know, she is one of the most competitive people on the face of the planet, sort of a full contacts checkers sort of uh, gal. And, um, she had gotten, um, you know, she, she, she jumped on the learning curve very quickly with volleyball. And, uh, there was a, a lady who would kind of come to the local, school games and would recruit kind of at those games. And, you know, she, you know, kind of whispered to us, Hey, I like her and, you know, I would like to have her in my club and that kind of stuff. And so we took her out there. There were a number of older Stonebridge kids that were playing in her club. And, and so we went out there and it served its purpose for a couple of years. And, you know, we learned the basics and we had a good time with it. And most importantly, it was what we needed to have, um, Allie, uh, and Emmy, my number two daughter, mm -hmm. um, both say, yeah, we love this. And this is, we want to do this and we want to, you know, commit to these sort of travel seasons. And Allie took it a step further and, and started playing uh, heavily on the beach. And she had a lot of success uh, playing on uh, the beach. And we traveled all up and down the East coast, played a lot in North Carolina, played South Carolina, played Virginia beach, went down to junior Olympics in New Orleans and just had a really good time playing on the beach. But Allie never being satisfied that she's, you know, beating up on kids her own size and age. She she wanted to go hunting for what she thought was the best. And so pound for pound, she she did her research and, and she believed that Williamsburg Volleyball Club for her particular age group had the strongest team in this region. And, you know, I said, well, if you want to try out, you can try out. And um, not to be negative, I, I just. I just figured if they were that good, she wasn't going to make the team and we'd go give it a shot and we'd have a character building speech on the way home. And, you know, it would be a, an experience that we'd build from. And as it turned out, she made the team and um, had, a, had a lot of fun with it. We played out there for four years. Emmy decided that she liked what she saw. So she tried out for the club. She made it. Uh, and so fortunately, they ran similar schedules. So we were usually at you know the same terms. There were times where they were split, but uh, for the most part, that that dominated our, you know, our volleyball world. But I was not going to 
I was not going to do it uh, <laughs> second round with the younger ones and drive out to Williamsburg. So that was a, a heavy motivator for launching the club. But really more than anything was that, you know, youth athletics is is horrible when it comes to some of the, the stuff that goes on. And, and we say all the time, the worst part about youth athletics is, are the are the parents. And, um, you know, I, we just make it real clear in our club that we, we don't, we're not going to tolerate that sort of stuff. We're not going to tolerate the gossip and the backbiting and the foul language and the and the attack on the culture and, you know, just exposing the girls to that kind of um, stuff. You know, it's just stuff, junk, crap. Uh, and so we really wanted to do something different. And that was that was the goal then. It remains the goal now. And again, uh, referencing our families within the club, we believe that um, we have a very, very um, strong culture. Uh, we go to these tournaments and people ask, who are you guys? And, you know, where do you come from? And, and they, they notice, um, you know, that there's something different about the girls making honor calls, which is unheard of. And the parents, the way they uh, cheer and they, they, they bond together and the way the girls get along. Um, it's, it's a pretty special group of girls. Yes. Well, I do know that uh, for Stonebridge, uh, uh, for uh, school volleyball and then also here with uh, club volleyball. I know that uh, my brother and sister and I, we definitely know a couple of the couple of the families, you know, that we uh, that we grew up there, uh, you know, Mark and Angie uh, Williams and then uh, Justin and Kim Gardner there. I know that uh, their daughter plays for you on the club, but uh Definitely uh, successful uh, programs there for uh, school. And then as you are uh, currently leading the, uh, the club team. Yeah. So those families that you named are, are great uh, examples of, of the, of the club culture. Um, of course, the Williams, uh, I got to uh, coach Drew and Molly. Um, and um, what was cool about that is that um, while we were having success with the, school program when we launched this club um that second year uh drew uh came in and was on my 16s team molly was on the 14s team and mm -hmm. i took that 16s team that year and um you know it was the girls that would go on and win that 2019 state championship mm -hmm. uh and we uh we enhanced that team with some other kids from across the area we had a uh, a girl out of um portsmouth christian and one out of isla white we had a kid out of deep creek um, and uh, I think we had a couple Western branch kids on that team. And I'm just telling you that was, we went around and they, uh, they surprised a lot of people, but all the while it had the support and just, uh, just the humble, um, attitudes of not only the players, but, you know, Mark and Angie Williams. And then, uh, back in that 13 season, um, or, or, or I guess it was four or five years ago. Um, so we when I was doing the 13 season, my, my number three daughter was at that age. Uh, the gardeners came in um, and uh, brought Peyton and Peyton has been on the team for the 13s, 14s, 15s. Now she's on our 16s team. Great family, great kid. Uh, again, um, they, they um, are great promoters of it. They buy into it. Um, they're what we want in families uh, in the club. And so, yeah, those two examples of the Williams and Gardeners are, are great, um, I guess, um, ambassadors uh, for what PVA uh, seeks to, to promote and uh, to have as a club culture. Yes. Well, uh, Eric, I'm uh, sorry for uh, going past our time, but uh, definitely uh, appreciate your time here to, uh, promote the uh, success in the ministry of Stonebridge Volleyball and then also uh, club club volleyball. So appreciate your time. No, thanks for having me on, Rags. I appreciate it. I, I love talking volleyball. I love Stonebridge. I love PVA. Uh, and I love what you're doing here. So uh, keep up the good work, buddy. Um, right. it, it was good to be a part of the program. And I will see you Sunday at church. All right. Sounds good, Eric. And uh, so uh, everybody here that was uh, just an episode here talking about uh, talking about volleyball and with, uh, you know, with being around the baseball field or the 
basketball court. Uh, Elizabeth and I, we do have a niece up in uh, Northern Virginia that is uh, middle school age and starting to get the taste of uh, school and club volleyball. That's great. So, but, uh, all right. Well, Hey, uh, appreciate your time and, um, look forward to, uh, seeing, uh, pictures there of, uh, peak volleyball here with the club schedule. And then Elizabeth and I will, uh, stay tuned in to the, uh, 2023 season there for Stonebridge. So thanks again, Eric. Sounds good. Thank you, buddy. All right. We'll see. All right. Bye-bye.